We look at the challenges the new government faces and to discuss this, of course, we're being joined by Vikas Singh, who's an economist and author. He's joining us from Hyderabad. Mr. Singh, pleasure having you here on World Business Watch. Moody's has expressed concerns about the slower pace of fiscal consolidation due to the weakened mandate. Could you elaborate on the challenges that the new government is likely to face now? I think there are several reforms that uh, may face uh, hurdles with the new government because uh, this is probably the first time Modi is running a coalition government. Even in Gujarat, when he was when he ran two terms, it was a government where he had the majority. I think the biggest uh, threat uh, uh, to the reform will be uh, on the issue of the farm reform that he wanted to bring in. Uh, that's going to be the biggest uh, threat. Similarly, uh, uh, he wanted to bring in labor reform, the ease of doing business. He may face uh, significant challenges to uh, bringing those reforms. The trade union will oppose it. And if the trade union opposes it, his coalition partners will not take it uh, um, positively. Third, thirdly, his uh, focus towards privatization and disinvestment will also face uh, hurdles uh, because uh, this may lead to job losses. So these are some of the challenges that he will face. The land acquisition is another challenge that the Prime Minister will face because uh, over the last 10 years, the government has made tremendous progress in investing in uh, infrastructure development. The result of that has just beginning to show up. Uh, but with the coalition government, he will face uh, immense challenges uh, from his coalition partners if he wants to acquire land which is key to infrastructure development. Uh, Mr. Singh, uh, then, yeah, please, please, please go ahead. There's also challenges. Uh, I think the, the I think the biggest threat uh, to the reforms will be in the area of uh, agriculture reforms. I think India Indian farmers need uh, a holistic uh, uh, reforms. Uh, you know, just putting subsidies, subsidizing the farmers is not uh, enough. We we've, we've tried doing that for the last seventy years. Uh, I can't imagine 50% of India's population living on 16% of the GDP. So India needs a holistic uh, farm reforms. And that, in my mind, uh, is something that uh, will really slow down the reform process. Uh, the government needs to bring in its coalition partners together to bring in those reforms, because reforms are the only way in, uh, India can... Uh, grow at 8%. Uh, Mr. Singh, now Fitch Ratings has highlighted hurdles for the government's reform agenda. You've mentioned a few of the major challenges that are going to come in carrying out those reforms. From your perspective, what are the key reforms that could face the most significant obstacles? You've elab If you can elaborate on it further, and how might this impact India's economic outlook? You've spoken about the reforms regarding the rural sector, if you can elaborate further. Yeah, uh, let's focus on the agriculture reforms. As I mentioned yes. earlier, I think that this is this this needs to be done. Over the last 70 years, uh, we've tried everything uh, to enhance farmers' income. We have we have given them uh, loan waivers, we have given them fertilizer subsidy, we have given them MSP. But I think those are uh, those have been positive steps, but they don't really solve the real issues. The the real issues of the farmers is that they are just too many farmers for too too little land. The farmland uh, uh, halves every seven years. And I'm, I'm saying that because the data shows that if an average farmer has three children over the next 20 years, uh, the land farm, the farm is divided by three. So every seven years, uh, the, the land is, uh, the farm is half. With low uh, land holding, there's no way a farmer can uh, make a livelihood out of farming. So that's a big challenge. The government needs to bring in uh, holistic reforms in that. Now, uh, Nitish Kumar uh, and uh, Chandrababu Naidu, I mean, they're seasoned politicians. Both of them have been chief ministers earlier. Naidu is known for his reformist uh, view. However, over the last 10 years, uh, we have noticed that uh, uh, nobody wants to really do anything radical as far as farmers uh, is concerned. The government tried uh, three, four years back, but it had to back down. We were hoping that with a clear majority this time, the prime minister may be able to pull, push that reform through. Uh, he will have to 
really burn the midnight oil, yes. make sure that uh, his coalition partners are with him. Yes. Because that's something that uh, needs to be done. It affects about 50% of India's population. It affects about 65% of rural India. And uh, without uh, adequate income in the hands of the farmers, there will be uh, not only uh, yes. economic crisis, but also social unrest. Uh, Mr. Singh, thank you so much for joining in and sharing all your insights. Of course, a lot of the distress which has been highlighted after this election, through the course of this election rather, which has come in from the rural sector, which needed to be highlighted. And of course, a lot of the reforms are also going to be targeting the areas in the rural sector, the agriculture reforms, of course, that you've elaborated on in great detail. Thank you so much for coming in, making the time for us and sharing all your insights. Thank you so much. Have a good day.